Hey folks, Jonathan here. Uh, figured I'd do another one of them long-winded videos before the storm hits here. I've uh, been working all day getting ready for it, and I think we're going to be okay. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, in the hardware store, I thought maybe the volume would be a little bit better and a little bit of lighting anyway. So, uh, what I want to talk about this time. Uh, record business, record service. Uh, over the you know few years here that I've done YouTube videos, I've had a lot of people that have gotten a hold of me or asked me about getting into the record business, you know, young people and stuff that's uh, that's trying to get into it or, or trying to get rolling at it. Anyway, I wanted to talk about how somebody could be, get started or give my, uh, not necessarily my story, but my advice uh, on how I would go about getting started because I feel like I sort of done it twice and I'll explain that. Uh, 95 uh, I started towing for myself, and although I never stopped towing, I slacked off. You know, I, I've done a magazine. I helped a couple people out uh, at their shops, just you know, not as being a an employee, but just helping them out, uh, keeping them, well actually running their shops. But uh, done that for a little over a year. Still done the magazine and still towed. But I didn't tow heavy. But when I first got into towing, uh, I didn't go to the motor clubs. Uh, I didn't know to go to the motor clubs, and I didn't have internet access or anything like that. So you know, I didn't even have numbers for them to uh, find them. But uh, what I done was uh, go around to the garages, you know, flyers, cards, trying to pick up as much towing as I could. Uh, like a lot of young people do that are get into it that don't know what they're doing. I tried to undercut everybody else's prices. Um, you know, my truck I built myself and, you know, it didn't cost me any money. Now I did get on rotation. That was the big deal. But uh, the, uh, the second time was when I decided to go back into or go into it heavier than what I was. And when I say heavier, I mean uh, hire some employees really start towing hard and heavy and and you know I was chasing money like everybody else and uh, so what I done was uh, get a hold of AAA, uh, Ajero, Allstate, uh, Road America, uh, uh, Sherian, a uh, bunch of bunch of you know different motor clubs out there and uh, you know back it was a actually cross country before it was Ajero but uh, you know, everybody talks bad about them, and, and even I've been known to say a few bad things about, you know, the motor clubs. But the motor clubs is what actually got me where I'm at now. And, you know, when you're, when you're starting out, you know, there's basically two ways of getting into the record business. Uh, or two ways to get into it, I think, in my personal opinion, successfully. One way is in if you inherit it. Uh, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people do that. You know, Dad started it, Grandpa started it years back, something like that. Uh, the other way is, is is hard work, but you need them motor clubs when you're starting out to get you along. And I used to take some of the craziest calls. I sit here and think about it, and I think, you know, I cannot believe that I even took them. You know, uh, Chapel Hill's about, I don't know, 50 miles from me, and I would take a cha tire change in Chapel Hill. I'd jump in the service truck, I'd go to Chapel Hill, I'd change it. You know, I'd make a little bit of mileage and, and the money for doing it, and I would roll on. And, you know, Rockingham, places that was too far for me to even really need to go, you know, uh, it didn't matter if it was Triple A or, or Ajero or what, I would go. And, of course, you're deadheading your mileage back. Uh, so, you know, unless you negotiate with them and get, you know, miles coming back per call, you know, as they call you. Uh, you know, you're, you're just going to do it at their rate. And, uh, you know, when I agreed to a rate, uh, you might not shake anybody's hand, but it was, you know, to me it was no different. You know, I agreed to the rate. I was going to go buy it. I wasn't going to charge the customers any extra, which I see a lot of people do. Uh, you know, if, if they're covered and the hook fee is, you know, I'm charging, let's say, $30 is what my agreed price is with the motor club. And then I'm doing, you know, 3 bucks a mile. Uh, then, you know, and let's say they're covered for $50. 
if uh, I tow it two miles and I'm going to make $34, I'm not going to gouge the customer and charge them a bunch of extra. You know, I've seen people do it. People to this day do it. I know people that do it. And uh, I'm not going to do it. But, uh, but my suggestion, uh, first, you know, I, I see people, and I've seen people over the years get into this, and they'll go buy a high-dollar truck, and they'll have payments. And then they won't have a choice but to run constantly. I don't suggest that. I suggest buying an older truck. And honestly, in my opinion, especially for somebody that don't know how to work on trucks, you know, if somebody is not able to, uh, well, if you're not able to do any of your work on your truck, you might be screwed either way. But uh, if you're able to do a little bit of work to your truck, I would buy something pre-electronic. I mean, I've had probably the best service and the best luck out of my 89 internationals with the 73 IDIs. Uh, Non-turbo, not a lot of power, not a lot of speed, but you know, dependability, you just can't, you can't get anywhere else. I mean, it's just crazy and, and you know, unless you get a DT-466 non-turbo or non-electronic or something like that. But, uh, you know, the old, the old 73s was, was, you know, pretty much bulletproof. Keep them from overheating, keep oil on them. You know, the parts are cheap. You know, you can find the parts and stuff. Uh, for example, I know a guy that just got into the record business probably two or three years ago, and he started hauling. He was hauling for Copart, which, you know, puts a lot of miles on your trucks. Uh, Copart's a salvage company. And uh, for the money you make, it's not worth the, the mileage you wear your truck out before you get it paid for. No, no doubt about it. So I talked to him the other day, and he said that he... Because he can't work on his own trucks, he bought a new truck, traded that one in, and which kind of surprised me. But he told me that it was cheaper for him to trade it in because he had spent fifteen thousand dollars in repairs, and you know just recently before that. But uh, you know, I can spend fifteen grand and have a nice truck, and you know they're spending fifteen thousand dollars in repairs, and I guess that's you know. I, Looking at it two different ways, that's a way that you can go, but that's not the way I suggest going. And, uh, and you know, this is my suggestion. This is not what you have to do. But, uh, but the first thing I would do would be get a, if you're going to concentrate on motor clubs, get a rollback. If you're going to concentrate on highway patrol, uh, at least in my area or in North Carolina, get a wrecker. Because you can't get on rotation with a rollback. You can get on with a wrecker. And you can use a rollback in place of your record, but you can't get on with a just a rollback. And the other thing is, is if you got a record, how only requires four hundred fifty thousand dollars insurance. Uh, but if you have a rollback, federal law says you've got to run four higher tag. If you run a four higher tag, then you've got to have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars insurance. And then if you run some of the motor clubs, you got to have a million dollars insurance. And I've always carried a million dollar policy. And uh, but if you wanted to get out cheap. And you didn't mind doing the work and setting up dollies, you know, when you need to, when you got tires that are flat and stuff like that. The wreckers is actually the way to go with only paying the four hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars insurance, and that'll get you started. When I started back, my second go around, and I say started back, but like I said, I never stopped towing. But when I started back hard, uh, I picked up Triple A. I didn't have a rollback. I was running a wrecker with. Uh, I had my rollback down. I was running a record with dollies. I was dollying everything I could. I towed, and even worse, I didn't have self-loading dollies. I had the old pan-style dollies. So I was jacking stuff up. I was doing everything. I was, you know, busting butt. I went to calls and had change in my pocket to put in for fuel, and was using, you know, change to buy fuel because I didn't have money. And when I had gotten, you know, back into it heavy, and you know, just you work hard at it and you can get it. But them motor clubs, although a lot of people talk trash about them, uh, they will get you in a spot where later on you'll be able to, uh, you know, actually make something. One thing that I was taught by an elderly man that uh, had a record service for many years and he passed away is it does not matter where you're at, they will call you. So the need for a big nice building you know in the middle of town you don't have to have now if you're running a garage that's something different but 
as a record service, you can be anywhere, you know, they're going to call. And uh, so I don't suggest anybody going out and renting a big building and, and everything. I mean, you know, you need a storage lot. Uh, you got to insure your storage lot uh, with, with uh, well, you, garage keepers legal liability is what you got to have. Same thing you would if you had a garage, but it covers the vehicles in the lot. Uh, you need to have uh, on-hook coverage on the vehicles that you're towing. You know, that'll cover, you know, your cargo. Uh, some companies listed as cargo insurance, some co companies listed as on hook. Now here in North Carolina, uh, if it's listed as cargo insurance, the Highway Patrol won't accept it. It's got to be listed as on, you know, on hook. And uh, one thing I learned is the, uh, the undercutting prices is, is, is not smart. It's not a good thing to do. And the reason I say that, uh, there was a particular garage that I tried to cut the price. And I know the guy that was towing for him was, was charging more money than, than what I was and or what I even offered. And, uh, and I'll tell you how long ago it's been. I was, I was towing for $25, $30, $35, you know, per tow. And uh, the, uh, the garage, you know, needed a lot of towing done, but they would just would not give me their work. They would not give me their work. They were... Uh, you know, I finally figured out later on why, and uh, after I met the guy that was towing in the, uh, for him, and the guy I met that was towing for him was Larry Pops, uh, a but good buddy of mine that passed away. I, I, you know, he sort of claimed he adopted me, you know, about 20 years ago, but but uh, I didn't know that he was towing for him, and didn't really know him at the time. But uh, he was doing all the towing, and they were so satisfied with his work, and when they called, he was there. Then. Uh, they didn't need me. They, you know, they wasn't going to, you know, why would you switch even pay less money if you're getting good service? And when, uh, when Larry had gotten out of the record business, uh, not long before he passed away, uh, the owner of the shop had actually, I don't, I'm sure Larry had, had recommended me, but I started towing for them. And that's the 24 Bay shop that I tow for now. And I've uh, been towing for them. I don't have to worry about anybody taking it from me because when they call I'm there uh, you know if they need something I'm gone and you know a lot of times if it's uh, you know I've got another shop I tow for they, they wrecked their company vehicle during the I, the last ice storm that we had had and or, or snowstorm and I went and pulled it out took it to the shop didn't charge them for it you know you gotta let them know that you appreciate what they you know what they're doing for you by giving you the work and not only that, when they call, you need to be there. Uh, if uh, if they call, and see, I, I'm really bad about not wanting to sit on calls. Uh, it bothers me to get a call and then put it off. In other words, if I put that call off, what if I get another call in? And then I start getting backed up, and then, you know, a highway patrol co call comes in or something like that where I've got to go. So I don't do that. So when the phone rings, uh, don't just sit there and watch TV or do whatever, you get up and you roll. And, you know, I've seen it so many times that, uh, you know, even at a rotation call, Highway Patrol call, I got to, and the trooper had to leave, and I, you know, the, the trooper asked me if I would wait for the other record service to get there. And uh, knowing that the other record service got to call the same time I did, I waited. It was another 30 minutes, and then when he got there, I found out that uh, he had just sat down to eat. He wasn't going to stop eating until it was time to go. Well, I didn't say a word. I had just sat down to eat too. But, uh, you know, the food went in the microwave and I went to the wreck. And, you know, that's one of the main things is when somebody's sitting alongside the road or even a highway patrol waiting for you, if you've ever been alongside the road or waiting for somebody or waiting for, you know, service like that, five minutes seems like 30 minutes. And, you know, it. it the longer you wait, the matter you're going to be. And, you know, you try to, to roll with them. We, we love for them to leave the keys, you know, hide the keys somewhere. We'll come get it. But, you know, if they're not, then we're going to, we're going to you know, get to them just as darn quick as we can, get them off the road. Uh, and even if they do leave the keys, you know, I don't want to leave their car there. Uh, you know, uh, that happened one time. A uh, fellow had called, and, and I couldn't get to it at a certain time. And, it was, you know, hours later, by the time we got there, someone had knocked a driver's window out of his truck. Well, uh, so I helped him find a driver's window for his truck and, and took care of it because I felt 
even though it wasn't my fault in any way, shape, or form, I felt bad because I couldn't get there as quick as I needed to get there. And, uh, you know, I don't like leaving people alongside the road. I don't like uh, leaving vehicles alongside the road. And, you know, especially in some areas, you know, they'll get tore up and beat up and, and everything. And uh, as for uh, the cars on the side of the road with the orange stickers, I get this question all the time. Can anybody pick that car up? And, you know, I don't know how they do it in other states, North Carolina. You leave a car alongside the road. As long as it's not impeding traffic, like, you know, my rotation was yesterday or the day before yesterday, I think it was. Uh, as long as it's not impeding traffic, the highway patrol is going to leave it there. They're not going to rush in there and get it and tow it. Uh, they'll put a sticker on it and it'll say 24 hours on it. But I've seen them sit there for three weeks to a month before they actually have them towed. Now, if someone beats the windows out and cuts the tires, steals the tires, they'll go ahead and have them towed. But besides that, they won't. Uh, but, uh, we cannot pick one of them vehicles up. Nobody can legally pick one of them vehicles up without the highway patrol calling. Uh, I actually had a guy just the other day that said that he heard it was okay as long as you had a storage lot, anybody could pick it up and charge storage on it, even if you was a you know, Joe Blow with no record service. And I said, no, you know, it don't work that way. You can't touch them vehicles. I mean, it's no different than stealing a car. So for anybody that has that question. Uh, but, you know, rotation, when I first got on Highway Patrol, it was, you know, Pretty scary for me. I was 22, 21, 22 years old with a homemade record. Uh, no guidance. That was a lot of my problem. You know, if you can, you know, work for somebody else that is really in the record business, and uh, you can learn a lot. Now, the guy that I had worked for, that you know, where I had had a little bit, a little bit of experience with a record, uh, was a garage. You know, I was a mechanic, and I sort of run the record at night and on weekends and stuff. It wasn't a, a deal where I was out there doing it and uh, and he really wasn't a an operator anyway. You know, he went to a wreck one time and pulled a car out of a ditch and flipped the car over. I mean, I've seen that happen a few times, but and I've never done it. But, uh, and uh, anyway, so, you know, it's hard when you don't have somebody that actually is pretty heavy in the records to teach you. And uh, so you just, you know, make your way. Uh, another thing is damage. <clears throat> uh, I'll tell you a, a quick little story here. Uh, when I was using the wrecker and I was towing and I didn't have my rollback back on the road, that was a one-ton Chevrolet that I had. Uh, I took in, uh, I was hauling Mercedes, which you shouldn't do anyway with a wrecker, you know, you should have it on a rollback. But uh, I passed where I needed to go up in Fayetteville and I'd done a U-turn and when I'd done the U-turn between the roads, it was a real deep ditch. So I was turned and then went through the ditch at the same time. It wasn't a, now don't get me wrong, it was concrete. So I mean, it wasn't a dirt ditch or nothing like that, but it was just a low area. And when I did, I seen it in the mirror. Uh, one of the bolts on my sling popped a hole about the size of a nickel in the back of his bumper. And it was a plastic bumper painted on the back of a Mercedes. And I went to the Mercedes dealer. I unhooked the car. I went to the customer. I said, look, I got to show you something. And I showed him the hole. I said, I've done it. Uh, when you get it repaired here, come see me. We'll get it taken care of. So I had a buddy at a body shop that, uh, and it was actually Trey Powers, Powers Body Shop, the one that uh, clear coated Junior's car for him. And I knew he'd take care of the problem for me and not, you know, gouge me with a price or anything. So the guy had actually drove the car up, and right out here in the driveway, I told him, I said, Yeah, I'd like to to get the car, if I need to come tow it from your house, whatever I need to do, and take it to the body shop, I'll get it fixed for you, bring it back, and uh, quick as I can. And he said, oh no, I want to get, uh, you know, another particular body shop in Sanford to do it. And I knew this was a, a high dollar expensive body shop, it was going to really cost me. And, uh, and I said, well, you know, I've got a good body shop that'll do it, you know, and make you happy with it. And he said, no, I want the one in Sanford. So I made a deal with him, I said, look, let me take it to my friend, you know, Powers Body Shop. Let me take it to him. Let me have him fix it. You come look at it. If you're not happy with it, we'll take it directly to the other body shop and I'll pay to have it fixed twice. And he had nothing to lose, so he agreed to that. Well, that's what I've done. Now, this has been years ago, but since then, I know of three cars that Trey Powers has painted for the guy. And, you know, he was so happy with the work that was done on his bumper that it got, you know, Trey business. But 
if you ever damage anything, and I don't care what it is, anything, first thing you do is let the customer know. You don't hide things. You, you know, I've got to sleep at night. Uh, I'm not going to go to bed worrying about whether somebody's seen something or, you know, if, if somebody's going to see the damage or anything like that. If I tear something up or if any of my drivers was to ever tear something up, I wanted to know about it. We're going to take care of the problem. And I've actually taken care of problems that wasn't, you know, our fault. And, you know, little things like, you know, I trained everybody to unlock on the faster side. And I like to unlock cars on the faster side when you do lockouts just for the fact that there's always less damage on that side. You know, people have always tried to get in the driver's side, so they're liable to have scratches and damage. So if there's any damage put on the passenger side, you know, it would be us that done it. And, you know, I don't mind covering something that we've done, but I don't want to cover something somebody else done. So driver went out, unlocked the car. I get a call. The door handle on the driver's side is actually pulled off the car. And it was a plastic door handle and it had some uh, probably glue in or press in studs that went in it and then, you know, nuts on the inside of the door. So, uh, I can see my camera battery's getting ready to go dead. Uh, so anyway, the, uh, I knew we didn't do it, but I still took it and fixed it and took it back. And that kept a good customer. I mean, you know, there's... I think they had told me, you know, that, that their son had tried to get in it or did something, and I'm sure their son done it. Pulled hard on the handle and thought they could get the door open, but uh, it didn't cost me any money to fix it. It took a little time. I towed it. I towed it back to them, ready to go. So that's the best way to be. And it's not worth the sleep you lose over it. But let me go change this battery and I'll be right back. And also, since I'm back here, uh, the other thing I want to add about the guy with the Mercedes, I put a hole in his bumper. Not only has he had trade paint a bunch of cars for him, I've actually towed a bunch for him. So uh, who would you want towing for you? A company that if they hurt your car you're not sure whether they're going to take care of you or a company that if they damage your car they're going to fess up and let you know. So now I tow for him and he's got no worries because he knows that if something happens I'm going to be the one that takes care of it. So you know that's one of the most important things but like I said the other important thing if you want to keep your customers is, is you know be on time you know roll with it uh, don't sit around waiting uh, go ahead and call them motor clubs get your insurance uh, run the motor clubs and you know one thing I learned is you know they always said don't take all the calls I took every single call we got you know we, we ran AAA for you know years and never missed a call we would take every one of them now we might not take some of them that were out of area you know if they were too far away but we would take every call in our area we, we wouldn't miss any but once you're down like I am or like I was, you know, once you're slowing down and, and you know, you're, uh, you're trying to, you know, have a little bit of, of peace, you, uh, you don't have to take all the calls and they will keep calling you. And then uh, once you completely phase them out, like I, I have done, uh, to where I don't do any motor clubs now, they still call you. And, you know, they, even, even when you're completely away from and off of them, now, one thing that you can do is you can get a, uh, if you take credit cards, uh, you can still do the job for the tow company, or for the uh, motor club, but you do it at a commercial rate. You don't do it at a, at a uh, you know, a, a lessened rate. And uh, it works out really good because, you know, you're making more money off of it. So, but I, you know, I just don't do any of them. I'm down to where I just do my local garages that I've done for, you know, a long time. Uh, I do the Highway Patrol and Sheriff's Department, which I really enjoy doing. And, uh, and, you know, you're going to make your most money off your home patrol calls, uh, you know, the, uh, with the insurance deal, just, uh, you know, you, of course, you got to know, you don't, you know, everybody says, well, the record business is physics, physics, but if you think about it, it's the opposite of physics. Uh, you know, physics is the car is going to fall down the hill. The opposite of physics is I'm going to bring it out. So, uh, you, you've got to know a lot of angles and, and, you know, what you can and can't do and what you can, you know, handle. Uh, I sent Jordan, my son, to wreck master school. Now, it sounded kind of crazy because he had been on all kinds of wrecks. He had done all kinds of wrecks. Uh, you know, he knew what he was doing. But what I was trying to do is build his confidence. I wanted him to know that when he got to that call, no matter what it was, that he was not going to have any problems. He wasn't going to, you know 
there, there, you got to get to where you're, you're not questioning whether you can handle what you're doing. Uh, you know, you got to know for sure. And, you know, don't take shortcuts. Don't, uh, you know, if you got to roll back, keep you some boards on the truck because you never know when you're going to have a low car. Uh, don't take chances on tearing stuff up. If it takes you an extra five, ten minutes, you know, the other day, I don't know if you watched the, the, the tow, I towed the truck in with no wheel on it. You know, I could easily drop that truck off in the parking lot, wave to them and said bye. But uh, we took the jack, I helped them out, get the wheel back on it. That way they could roll it into the shop and do the work on it. And it's the little things like that that make the difference on whether the uh, the garage is going to keep you and keep calling you or if, you know, they're going to come to the next guy. You know, the, I'm sure that somebody could walk in there tomorrow and say, uh, the uh, well, they might not walk in and probably fly in with the wind, but uh, and say, hey, look, I want to, you know, I want to start doing your towing and I'm going to do it half the price of what the other guy does. And I honestly know and, and believe that the way that I know the people that, that own the companies and work at the companies that they would probably just laugh at them and say, I'm, you know, I'm not interested. And, oh, hold on just a second. Sorry about that. It was my son that called. Uh, but anyway, motor clubs is the way to go when you get started. Uh, get your insurance. Uh, keep your truck clean, nice, even if it's an old truck. Uh, the year, they really don't give you a problem on that. There's been a few motor clubs that wanted pictures, and I've never had an issue. Send it to them. They're happy to be done. You know, I, th I think they're just they're looking for something that's clean and got letters and nice. Uh, just try to be professional at it. Motor clubs, you can go right online. They got applications. You can do an application. Uh, you know, they're uh, they're not tough to get on. Uh, some of them I've done Geico for a long time. Geico was a little harder to get on because there was. Evidently, somebody in the area was doing it, but you know they're always looking for backups and stuff like that. Uh, and just do the best job you can do. And uh, we uh, actually won uh, American Towman Magazine uh, the Ace Award for two different years, and that was in the top one percent in the country for customer satisfaction, ETAs. You know, they average it all together, and. Uh, I was supposed to go to Baltimore both times and be presented with a belt buckle and all this stuff, and I never went either time. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and then we we won uh, AAA provi service provider of excellence, and uh, we done a good job. We was uh, we was always on time, you know, rolling with the calls, always kept the kept the customers happy. You know, that's the main thing. If you want a customer to call again, don't overcharge them. And uh, and I'll give you a little little tip that Larry Pops gave me years back uh, he always liked to charge $55 65 75 you know usually 55 65 75 he would never go he'd never charge $60 and I you know like if you did a tow and you did it for 55 probably over 50 percent of the time they're going to give you 60 and they're going to tell you to keep the change so you're going to make your 60 anyway most of the time and they're, uh, they're actually, you know, don't only make them feel good that they gave you an extra five bucks, but you know if they give you an extra five bucks as a tip, then, you know, you, you've done a good job and they're happy with you. So uh, that was something that he, he always done and, and I've done for years, you know, just cut it in, you know, with fives and, uh, you know, whether it helps or not, I don't know, but, you know, it's just something, something that he had taught me and, uh, you know, listen to the older guys and listen to the guys that are into it because they uh, they know what they're talking about. Uh, the reason I was able to do it without, you know, having a lot of... I didn't have anybody that showed me much, you know. Like I said, I, you know, basically the guy that I had worked for, you know, uh, you got a call, here's the keys, go do it. You know, it was one of them deals where you figure it out on your own, uh, never showed me anything. Never, I don't think he even showed me how to hook a car up. Just, you know, here, go do it. You know, he just... He was just that way, and uh, but what got me was is when when older people talked, and you know especially older people that was in the record business, I listened, and you know you can learn a lot just by by listening to what they're saying, and uh, and my son, believe it or not, Jordan used to ride with me in a rollback. I changed his diapers in a rollback. He didn't go to the you know daycare or anything like that. He he was with me all the time, 
And the older guys that, that I learned from got to know Jordan, and uh, and they th you know they still to this day, you know think a lot of him because you know he was a good kid. I didn't uh, I didn't let him get by with anything, but uh, so he was always good, respectful, and uh, you know it, it helped him out in the long run, and because uh, you know they've helped him out also over the years, and uh, but anyway, if anybody's got any questions about it, let me know and. Uh, and you know, there's other ways of doing it. I'm sure you know. Go finance a truck. You know, I think a new rollback you can probably hundred thousand dollars, hundred ten thousand uh, dollars. My suggestion is not to do that. You know, a, a used truck for eight to ten thousand uh, dollars. If you're driving a wrecker, you know, watch out. You can get one a little cheaper. Uh, try to make it look good. Don't worry so much about the year of it. Uh, you know. Uh, Dow's motor pole, one of the, the older fellows that's passed away years back, and then his son took over, and then he passed away. But uh, you know, he he was the one that, that taught me that it didn't matter where you lived or where you was at. You know, they're going to call you. They're going to call you. It don't matter. He uh, he had in the in the nineteen nineties, he had trucks from the fifties. He was running B model Mac. He was a Mac man. He loved his Macs, and <clears throat> I mean, he'd run an old B model Mac. You know, it, don't get me wrong, it'd be restored, you know, record bed, and, you know, he would roll on with it, but uh, he never had an issue. You know, uh, insurance companies never give you trouble about having an older vehicle or older truck. I think you never worry about how many claims you've had. And, uh, and knock on wood, wherever wood's at here, uh, never have had to make an insurance claim. And, uh, you know, very lucky, and, you know, the, uh, you, you know, it's worked out really well for me. I've, I've enjoyed it. I don't suggest it to everybody. Uh, being in the record business is not a job. It's a life. And when I say that, you know, you're going to uh, you're going to spend a lot of your time out working when you could be home with your wife. Uh, that eight to five, you can give that up. It ain't going to happen. Uh, you know, and you can't pay an employee for eight hours, you know, straight eight hours to work unless you're really really busy and then. You know, because, you know, if you just hit and miss all day, he's not going to get everything in that eight hours. So, uh, it's rough, but like I said, it's, it's actually absolutely a lifestyle. It's not a job. And uh, it's enjoyable, you know. Uh, I'll probably do it and I'll probably die doing it. But I just, you know, I enjoy it. I enjoy helping the people. There's a lot of opportunity to help people in it. So, all right. Sorry for so long-winded again. Appreciate everybody watching. And, uh... We'll see how the storm comes out. Bye.